This is the video answer key for number three. Hopefully you've already tried it and you're just checking your answer. If that's the case, you can feel free to skip ahead and make sure you did it correctly. If you're still struggling with this idea though, please watch and follow along. So we're, it says a game requires you to spin both of the spinners shown below. List the sample space along with each probability. In order to do that, we need to look at the spinners separately and also together. So the first spinner, the outcomes are red and blue. So we'll look at these outcomes. That's the sample space of just the spinner, We can uh, the first spinner. And we can look at just red and just blue right now. There are two outcomes. So the probability of each of those equally sized outcomes is one half. But since we're spinning both spinners at the same time, therefore we're calculating the compound probability, we need to look at more information just th than just that. So the first spinner, we could get either red or blue. Now it's time to look at the second spinner. If we got red on the first spinner, there are one, two, three, four possibilities for the second spinner. So I'm going to go ahead and draw four line segments come, branching out from this R, right? Because it's branching out like a tree, because that's what we're making, a probability tree. So we could get red on the second spinner, meaning we got red both times. Or we could get blue on the second spinner, meaning we got red first and then blue. Or we could get yellow on the second spinner. Oh, that's blue again, sorry. Could get yellow on the second spinner, meaning that we got red and then yellow. Or the last possibility is that we could get green on the second spinner, meaning we got red and then green. Those are all the possibilities that could happen if we got red on the first spinner. But we could have gotten blue on the first spinner. And if we had, there would still be four possibilities. So if we got blue on the first spinner, what could happen? Well, we could have gotten red on the second spinner. Or we could have gotten blue again, two blues. Or we could have gotten yellow, blue and then yellow or we could have gotten green, blue and then green. So that is a complete list of all of our probabilities for this compound event. First spinning the spinner with two possible outcomes and then spinning the spinner with four possible outcomes. When we make our list of outcomes, we should list all of the possibilities. So we could get red and then red again, or we could get red and then blue. So go through if you haven't already and make a list of all of the possible outcomes. Please pause the video while you do this so that you can check and make sure you have all eight outcomes. Here's my list of eight possible outcomes. Um, the probability of any one of the outcomes that I have listed is one out of eight. That's because there are eight total outcomes and they're all equally likely. I know that they're equally likely because the probability of red and blue on the first spinner were each one half. So those events are equally likely. And on the second spinner, there are four possible outcomes and there are, all of those areas are the same size. Therefore, the probability of any one of those outcomes on the second spinner is one fourth. So since the probabilities on the first spinner are all equal to one another, and the probabilities on the second spinner are all equal to one another, we know that all of the outcomes for the compound probability are all equal to one another. So therefore, the probability of red and then red is 1 out of 8. And the probability of red and then blue is 1 out of 8. All the way down, the probability for each one of these is 1 out of 8. Please make sure you give your probability as a fraction, a decimal, and a percent. Probability trees are great for figuring out information like this, but we can actually use them to figure out slightly more complicated probabilities. So we could also figure out what's the probability of just red and blue. So I don't want any or any any orange. Well, good thing. There's no orange at all. If I want just red or blue, I don't care what combination or which spinner, but I don't want any green or yellow. 
Well, I could count all the times that it's just red and blue. I could say there's one double red, one red, blue, mm, red and yellow I don't want, red and green I don't want. Oh, here's a blue, red, and a blue, blue. Those are both red and blue. But then I've got a yellow and a green for the last two. So it looks like four out of eight, or one half of the time, I've got just red and blue. So this allows me to figure out some more complicated probabilities that would be a little more challenging uh, without the tree. There are also mathematical ways to figure this out without drawing a tree, but for now we're focused on the tree. At this point, if you still have questions about how to create probability trees for compound events, please make sure to email Mrs. Nichols or set up an appointment with her so that she can help you with this.